Kashi Dale, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What are brothers and sisters? Hi. Kashi Dale. Kashi Dale, number 10. Kashi Dale, good morning, morning. Kamal, try to delay here. Ah, so this is the name. Oh, Mary Sanga, good morning. That's the name. Sama, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Everybody, good morning. 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 Okay. Good morning, Tripan. Oh, thank you for being such a kind of guy. You guys are 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 such a kind of guy. Um, said, um, I'd like to say Tashi uh, Dele to all the Dharma friends and all the Sangha, the Diko and Kagi lineage who are joining us today from um, all over the world on the live stream. Tashi de le, Rinpoche, may you have a long life, Rinpoche, long life, long life. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rinpoche, you are a long life. Rinpoche, you are a long life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good job. I love you, Rinpoche. Rinpoche, I'm so chen giduk. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, really? Really? ちょっと温かいよりまたなんかいいよりちょっと温かいよりちょっと温かいよりちょっと温かいよりちょっと温かいよりちょっと温かいよりちょっと温かいよりちょっと温かいよりちょっと温かいよりちょっと温かいより
Hamzum Chigi Gawu and Kyoba Jigdi Sumi Gumbe Gongzo Tine Chibu Chibu Ten Gebadi Anne Dos Naranzota online Zoom Guni Anne Toeje and the To Kutik Chigin the Anne North America the Gumka Yu Sobe Dos Kutik Chevare in North America, the Gunga Yu Chokba, the Tining Aranzo International, the Gunga Yu Council Gita, Yala di Chade, and the Tama Kinsa Dare, and the Dusing Yanga Kashihama won in the Yubaina, and Dusha Koech to the Dusing Basaja Chiwani. And during the Ta Machu Melam Chibogi, and the Tadus online, and the Zumbi Zumdi Nala, and the Pebby Begi. Tini so capture gajin to chang cho zebi tini uh lama gave shingi number da tini hengi chongmala tini the uh North American Gaju uh Chokbe uh Yule number ki chop shuje and it changmala uh tashi delay shu yi uh and that tiringi saga dawagi and it se ny shunga and tuzu kebaji ani tuzan jen de de nganzo digumka gyu gi tembe sodu gen dine gombuludu gi namdu tu taba dine digum kyoba jigdi sumdi gombu gi ani a ta de nganzo ka ta no tige kongi tikadi a jesu tenge chidula dine nganzo tanda Zamuling is such a cow as a little big, it didn't go to be Jang, but Tangbe, Tangme, Dusta, Chimbu, Chijoki Chawa, Chimburgi Chito Latine, Dus Chitere, and Chidangi, the Arinau, the Chasha Vaina, and Naranzo, Chidangi Narne, Dine, Tuzu, Tiringi, Tuzitela, Misukar Chetine, Naranzo, Chezo. So, 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 uh so ne uh dumba the chadere, matha dun so sare, and tango the Los Angeles Sore Mar and take up the Nanzugi, the good Tembata, Anne Dugun Yangu, Ishinu, Ushu Top, who's an Satango the Los Angeles to Sore. Anne Tanangazu Kube Machu Milam Chubos and the Sway the Tini, uh Capture Garden Dojicha, Chogi, Lamdio Latini. Manzu Dugu, Arila Yubig, Duguga Yubi, Jang Batangma, Loma Tangma, the Niji, Rugu, Yonga, that the Niji Chito, the Kamadore, the Niji Chito, that the Tushi, to some shane, the Nanga Zamaju Melam Chibos in it, Melam Gimin to Stache, the Nanga Topa, the Melam Gitopa, the Tuche, and it was Toe, the Jungre, and it Tapala, Tadumba, Tadun Sosare, and Tai Gebadi, and the Jidan Dunning, Nidu Nishu Lola. Ari New York lah, di ni dalam orang tu international juga juga kanser gaya lah. Ani North America juga juga sana lagi game kurce. Ani orang tu ani kerja kerja tu je jangan cok. Di New York lah, pep ni di ni orang tu lama tengah rujuk je ni. Cuma tu tadi cebar di ni yang name dia begini je. Ani macam zoom tu cuma cuma orang mana. Ini dah lain dia cakap lagi online zoom di zoom di tola tu semua tu. Ani macam malam cumbu. So to what you are doing, I'll pay me see you. I need to see you and talent. So I need to imagine Melam Jumo, uh, do so at the end. So, uh, I'm going to be named the game. Be done on the me Mongoji and the dead on Chindere and me Mongoji that and that Javarda Payudani. This meeting is being recorded. Name the then the another national don the the song ma. Ani nele new do chaya da dene. Name the game be me the rong chi ma thamje ki che do la dene ngazu de melam do suayi. Ani ta di zerim di ma gozo wani to zo 
sublime throne, precious and exquisite, and upon a lotus, moon, and sun, sits the root guru, inseparable from supreme Lord Jiktin Sungun. White tinged with red, he is radiant with the splendor of the major and minor marks. He wears bright saffron-colored dharma robes, a monk's vest, and a red meditation hat, the sign of ultimate accomplishment. He sits in Vajra posture within a five-colored rainbow sphere. His hands in the Mara subduing and meditation mudra. He is surrounded by the golden garland of the ultimate lineage, along with the masters of profound view, vast action, and meditation. In front and behind, to the right and left, upon loyan thrones and seats of lotuses and moons, is the divine assembly of Yidams, the three jewels, and the Dharma protectors gathered like clouds. The light streaming from the three syllables at the three places invites the wisdom beings in identical forms. <laughs> Oh, I 
endowed with ten powers, together with your retinue, the ocean of three jewels and three roots, by the power of the previous vows which you took out of great compassion for wandering beings, please come here without delay. Please be seated with joyful expression upon this lion throne with lotus and moon, with bodies as numerous as dust motes in the universe, I prostrate to the embodiment of inconceivable qualities. and so forth. I offer them to the victorious ones.
of a billion universes of all the 10 directions laid out in groups of Mount Meru, the continents and the islands, all adorned with various desirables. Please accept it and grant accomplishments here and now. of the three times, I respectfully pay homage with my three doors. I make oceans of outer, inner, and secret offerings. I confess all wrongdoings and downfalls created by the three poisons. I fully rejoice in the three secrets. Please turn the Dharma wheel of the three vehicles and remain in the nature of the three Vajras. I dedicate an ocean of virtue completely free of the three spheres in order to attain the unsurpassed state of the three kayas. <laughs> Recognizing the nature of your vast qualities, I pay homage and offer praise with a hundred thousand melodies. Oh, uh-huh. 
Um, so first, um, <coughs> I'd like to say um, to um, uh, everyone joining the um, great um, uh, prayer festival, the Mönlam Jemo, of the Jigun Kagyu lineage on the live stream. Um, and so, <coughs> uh, like regarding the, now the origin of where this a tradition of the great Mönlam, Mönlam Jemong comes from, because nowadays we have these uh, prayer ceremonies throughout all the different traditions. So it was actually um, first started in the Gelugpa tradition by um, Jie Tsongkapa, um, uh, when, um, in, when in, in Lhasa a, a prayer festival was being held, and there was this um, emergent um, Atuklava, um, Karpa, Karpo, Anyways, um, um, from the family line of, of Sogyal. Um, and so anyways, he um, offered a, um, a crown ornament of the um, um, Chowo um, at that time. And so with that, the um, first uh, prayer festival, Malam Chemo, was uh, started. And so this is where, this was the very first uh, prayer festival. So it was started by Chie Tsong Kappa. And then nowadays, um, it has been, it has become a tradition in all the different lineages. And so all the lineages have their own um, prayer um, festival, or Mönlam. And it's very insignificant. Um, so for example, in our lineage, um, Lord Chik Dun Sumgen had said in the dedication, I dedicate all the virtue accumulated by myself and others in samsara and nirvana and after three times. So we bring into one all the virtues <laughs> coarse and subtle 
and dedicate them. And so if we know how to dedicate our virtues, then um, it will become a cause of great merit. And actually, uh, we are always continuously accumulating merit. It's just that we don't recognize it as a, a merit. Um, and so that's why we cannot really transform it into a great merit. And so um, of all the different um, prayers uh, that we um, perform, that we recite, the king of all aspiration prayers is the prayer for excellent conduct um, that uh, we therefore recite uh, most importantly here and that everyone um, should know about. Yeah. Oh, and so on, Rinpoche then also said that the, the Gilukwa um, tradition, by starting um, this um, Merlom, um, it was really uh, very um, auspicious um, because in this, for this reason also, for due to this in, like auspicious connection, they really became um, like um, a glory, um, a kind of a an, an, kind of an, a glory that out outshines some um, all of some Sara and Nirvana in the world. So what we first need to understand is uh, we need to recognize uh, the merit, the cause of merit. And even though we have it, uh, we don't often, normally we don't recognize it. So that is because we don't really understand what merit really is. So we think that only when we do um, a certain uh, special dharma activity, for example, you have constructed a temple and so on, you think that that's a merit. Um, and then, however, um, you don't recognize that in all your worldly activities, all the things that you do, um, there are many causes of merit, but we don't recognize that. Um, and so it is said that what makes something virtuous is not the outer semblance of it, 
but it's the virtues or the non-virtues um, state of mind. That is what determines whether something becomes virtues or not. So therefore, uh, we need to understand that it comes from a motivation. And so in our prayer, we dedicate our roots of virtue for the sake of all mother sentient beings, limitless space. And due to this, the, the aspiration becomes vast because the mind is really vast. Uh, but anything that comes from a good aspiration brings benefit. For example, in the mundane sense, nowadays, science as technology is developing and there are cars and airplanes and so on, and things are developing in the world. And actually, the ones who are able to utilize all these things, um, it benefits them immensely, actually. But then according to the Buddhist view, we have to recognize the merit in all of that and then know how to properly dedicate this merit. So actually, this um, cause of merit is everywhere, but only when we recognize it does it become a cause for attaining Buddhahood, attaining enlightenment. So we do good things in a mundane sense, but we don't recognize those um, as good things. So that is because we consider ourselves as most important. We do good things, but then we also think that we're doing, we are really doing those things for ourselves or in order to become wealthy and so on, or to not glorify ourselves, <laughs> not recognizing that there is actually a, an opportunity to accumulate great merit. And so in this way, we are wasting, we are spoiling a lot of our roots of virtue. So in brief, what we need to understand is that merit is anything that w brings about the benefit and happiness of others. So it is the motivation um, that, that, that drives um, our actions of body and speech. And when the motivation is altruistic, then the, whatever we do with body and speech becomes an accumulation of merit. And so we need to recognize that. And then recognizing the merit, we must dedicate them. So for example, also in a worldly sense, a mother who cares for her child, that caring is actually an incredible merit. It is actually a practice of the six parameters. But then the mother normally doesn't recognize that at all. And therefore, this virtue does not become a cause of enlightenment. And so now during a prayer festival, we bring to mind all of these roots of virtue that we have accumulated ourselves and others in samsara and nirvana um, throughout the three times. All the virtues accumulated in the past, um, right now and in the future that we normally do not recognize. We bring them all to mind and we dedicate them toward enlightenment. And then they will become a cause of enlightenment um, because and the, uh, the basis of enlightenment is the mind itself. And it is said that when you recognize it, you're a Buddha, and not recognizing it, you're a sentient being wandering in samsara. The basis of our mind is already a Buddha, um, and uh, that becomes actualized when, when we recognize this. Um, for example, also in terms of recognizing uh, merit, um, in the... Um, confession of downfalls um, from Bodhicitta, this text, it says that uh, one dedicates the virtue of even just having offered a spoonful of food to an animal. Um, or even if one is not able to do anything at all with the body and speech, if you just have a wish to benefit others, <coughs> that should be recognized as merit. That is the merit. And once you recognize it, you must also know how to properly dedicate it. And then it really becomes meaningful, the cause of enlightenment. Um, so, for example, it's just like uh, in, the, uh, in, the, um, uh, no, in the in the morning um, like sun, when you see the, uh, the, the, like the kind of the, the flickering of the gold in the um, stones and the rocks and so on. Um, so just basically the, the presence <coughs> alone of the gold is not uh, really what makes you have the gold, but you have to skillfully extract the gold from the, from the rock. And so that is similar to the Buddha providing us with the skillful methods to attain enlightenment. 
um, the enlightenment of all sentient beings. And so the skillful method is to recognize the merit that we accumulate and then to, to dedicate it properly. And so that's the reason why these prayers um, and prayer festivals are so important. <laughs> Rangi, <laughs> Oo to the <laughs> Tell Sergio, <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Um, Repa said that um, when you have a virtuous motivation and uh, whatever you do, um, if, even if you're just eating and drinking and so on, everything becomes then a cause of, of merit. Everything becomes a merit, um, just naturally. And so basically, whatever you do um, with the motivation of um, love and compassion um, becomes um, a, a great merit and becomes the benefit of sentient beings. Um, and so, for example, there's one story about a time when the Buddha himself was alive um, and he was walking along a road and there were two um, children, two boys were playing with the sand. And when the Buddha came along, then one of those boys um, offered um, a, a handful of sand into the Buddha's begging bowl. Um, but um, in the boy's mind, um, it just, it wasn't sand, it was a golden um, castle. It was, you know, he built a castle with the sand, and so he was offering this um, golden castle to the Buddha, which was actually then sent into the Buddha's begging bowl. But the Buddha recognized um, how um, precious this was, and he asked his attendant, um, Ananda, to um, wrap up the sand and to bring it um, with him. And Ananda asked him, what, um, what should I do with it? And the Buddha said that bring it to the main temple and um, arrange it there um, on the shrine. So the Buddha recognized the, the power of this intention, of this great merit of that little boy. And in the future, this boy was actually born as the, the famous um, King Ashoka, who uh, was known for having built like uh, millions of um, stupas um, in, in the world. Uh, so that was because of that merit. So he became this um, great, um, famous King Ashoka because he had made this scent or gold offering to the Buddha when he was a boy in this other life. So this is this story shows the power of one's aspiration and how through this power of aspiration one's virtue, one's merit grows stronger and stronger. And so that is why um, such uh, prayer ceremonies and where we um, dedicate our roots of merit are so significant. And then each lineage has their um, own uh, spiritual um, teacher that they commemorate at certain times when they hold these prayer festivals. And so now we are commemorating um, Lord um, Chigdun Sumgan's um, great enlightened activities, um, the, the founding of um, this um, lineage. And so when we engage in such a prayer festival, we bring his enlightened activities um, to mind with great faith and devotion. So, for example, this morning when you wake up from sleep, um, you remember today is the commemoration of um, Lord Chikdin Sumgan. And by thinking that way, your mind is already very clear. And then now when you engage in the practice of performing prayers, you are recollecting the enlightened activities of these great masters. Um, and we do that on an ongoing basis, on special days. Uh, there are special like Buddha days or also during the full moon or the new moon each month. <coughs> there are special days that uh, were already said, but if we you know, recollect and we pray during these days, then our virtues actually increase by 100,000 times. So when we remember the enlightened activities and the kindness of these great masters, the Buddhas, and we remember the, 
the power of the Dharma on those days and we dedicate um, all of that and we make prayers, then on those special days, the prayers multiply and become extremely powerful. And that's why it is also very significant to make prayers on those days. And so what is the power of aspiration prayer? The power of aspiration prayer is explained in the King of Aspiration Prayers for Excellent Conduct. Um, so there is this um, a verse um, that um, says that um, may anyone who only hears this King of Aspiration prayer uh, once um, develop um, faith uh, and um, devotion and uh, therefore um, they turn um, this, like, this faith and devotion into a, a great um, merit um, so that they will experience the happiness of the gods and the humans and so on. So in any case, what this prayer is um, showing us is that the power of aspiration is really great. And so in our aspiration prayer of dedication, we dedicate all these roots of virtue after three times. So that refers to the kind of the uh, ordinary or the, maybe the, the concept bound, the defiled virtues. And now whatever we accumulate, but whether it is virtue or non-virtues, it will ripen eventually. Even if aeons pass by, once we have accumulated, we have created virtue or non-virtue, it will never become spoiled. It will at one point eventually ripen. And so <coughs> also when we um, accumulate merit and we recognize that, it will not just ripen once, but actually it will never become spoiled. It will become inexhaustible. And that is why, again, it is very important to make special prayers on these um, special days, because the power of our aspirations becomes enhanced, really. Um, so during uh, a prayer festival, therefore, I encourage um, you all to really direct your mind to these prayers, such as the King of Aspiration prayers and um, really uh, reflect on the meaning of what you are reciting and recognize the the merit in all of that. That's very important. And then also in the dedication prayer, it says, and I dedicate the innate root of virtue. And the innate root of virtue is, um, it relates to the ultimate truth. So first the three, the virtue of the three times is regarding the relative and now the innate virtue is connected to the ultimate truth, the Buddha nature of all sentient beings. And the relative virtue supports, helps sentient beings to actualize their true nature. So the relative merit refers to our virtuous activities. And so through um, these, um, these will lead us eventually then to the ultimate. It will, it will open up and reveal the ultimate virtue that is already inherent within us. The ultimate virtue already inherent within us is our Buddha nature. So all sentient beings are really Buddhas, but their mind is like a block of ice. And for as long as you don't place this ice into the sun, it cannot melt. Um, but uh, it is important to recognize that beings possess um, this quality and therefore they have the potential, they can ripen into complete Buddhas. And so therefore, because that is, what, that is their potential, it is important to pray for that, to dedicate your virtues toward that. And not just today, but on an ongoing basis, it's very important to always um, pray, make your prayers. And um, so it started, as we said, we started um, with um, um, the Rinpoche and so on, and um, not the, um, the special prayer festival. And until now, it has been sustained. And the power of us, that is because the power of aspiration is so great. Uh, so um, often um, the fault of not dedicating, of not recognizing that is that no, we do good things in our life, but then we don't recognize them as good and we don't dedicate them. And that is similar to um, having, a, no, having a piece of gold and then using that piece of gold to buy bread. And then you buy bread and you eat the bread and then the gold and the bread are both gone. And so Gambopa actually said, um, don't do that. 
Um, but um, instead of just looking for the short-term benefit, think about future lifetimes and dedicate all the merit for the sake of enlightenment. Um, so, and so therefore, um, recognize that um, that also our prayer festival on the live stream together is an incredible uh, accumulation of merit, and also recognize that merit can be accumulated on an ongoing basis continuously, no matter what you do in a mundane sense. Um, and as I said, no matter what you do, if, if it comes from a mind of <coughs> love and compassion, then it becomes a great merit. And if you recognize that it will not become spoiled, then you will be able to sustain it. So also use this opportunity today um, to reflect and to recognize that I have um, this merit. Um, to now I recognize it. So far I haven't, but now I recognize this great merit. And now I must make um, prayers. I must pray um, extensively because I can um, become enlightened. Sentient beings can become enlightened. And what I do with love and compassion can become a great benefit um, for sentient beings. And it will bring great benefit to the Buddha's teachings. Also, it is said in the um, Tambola um, practice that um, may I attain enlightenment within a single lifetime, which is the endless accumulation of merit. So therefore, the endless of accumulation of merit is to dedicate toward enlightenment. If you dedicate toward the attainment of enlightenment, and not just for this lifetime, then your merit will not become wasted. And actually, it will further and further increase. And in all future lifetimes, it will, it will never become exhausted, never become destroyed. So therefore, recognize how precious, how important dedication prayers really are. <laughs> Rawa的都差不多，你还中间的话，所以那么点点做个药嘞。就是说，那么就是他搞的药药，就是他啥家办的，就是他给，就是啥家办送药嘞，就是那些呢。所以那么小的，通着办，你们有的对吧？没，他
um, who um, strives after a purpose driven by the force of merit is like the sun um, shining um, un, kind of unhindered in, in an unhindered way. And so for example, what that means is there are a few people in the world, you can see that all, are always doing really well, no matter what they do, whether it's a Dharma activity or mundane activity, whatever they do, it seems to just work out well for them naturally, really effortlessly. So that's the meaning of that. And then Sakya Bandita continues and he says, and then those who lack merit, um, if they, if those who strive after purposes only through effort, uh, driven by effort, so not driven by merit, but driven by effort, uh, that is like a fire flame in the wind. It will be extinguished. So we often run after happiness, making the greatest effort to get what we want to gain. And there might be a slight merit in that, but that kind of merit uh, will uh, be interrupted. It will, uh, no, it will not become an inexhaustible, unobstructed merit. Miller Ripa also said that there are three um, states of mind, or three kind of motives that lead to such an kind of obstruction of merit, and that is when you accumulate merit if you only do it in order to be protected um, from the fears and the sufferings of this life, of your own life. Um, the second one is um, if you accumulate merit uh, out of uh, hoping for some kind of reciprocation. And then the third one is you're accumulating merit uh, out of um, um, vain and wanting to you know, you know, g gain a good reputation and so on. And so if you accumulate merit with these three kinds of motives, Milarepa said that there will only be a short-term benefit, but there will be no ultimate result of enlightenment. So look at these teachings by Milarepa again and again. And uh, Milarepa really shows also in this way, he shows a method, the, the way to actually accumulate great merit. And so we have an opportunity to accumulate merit, but we often don't recognize it. And um, so you know, we think that you know, somebody's doing something really great that. and we think, oh, this is a great merit. And it is great merit, but as I said, merit can and should be accumulated in, in any um, circumstance, in whatever you do. And how do we do it? Uh, it is through um, a good um, positive um, state of mind, a, a good heart. And if you have that, then whatever you do with body and speech becomes a great merit. And then that is something you should recognize and also dedicate properly. So this is what I wanted to share with you today, Dharma friends. <coughs> で、ナンポヨマイソアテトンダチボヨレ。ネカペンレスナンポヨマイスナンデジョロヨレ。お、サジタトサングヨナテニネカトリゲデワトンタトサジマトデバトスナンデジヨマレ。サチョチゲタ
meaning that temporarily you will always take birth in the higher realms until you ultimately yeah, attain enlightenment. So that is uh, um, th an important point that you should understand. So it's not, Milarepa isn't saying that there is no benefit at all if you have these motivations, it's just that there is not a long-term benefit, there may be just a short-lived benefit. So, so that's important to understand and you can also find these teachings in the 100,000 songs of Milarepa, which are very important. Uh, so anyways, um, I hope that uh, you are all um, well um, and healthy. Um, and I'm so happy to see you today. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. of the body, speech, and mind of all the victorious ones of the ten directions and three times, together with your lineage, I pray. Grant me your blessings that I may realize the illusory body to be the Nirmanakaya. Grant me your blessings that I may realize the life energies to be the Sambhogakaya. Grant me your blessings that I may realize the mind itself to be the Dharmakaya. Grant me your blessings that I may attain Buddhahood in this very life. With this supplication, the retinue dissolves into the guru. From the guru's forehead, throat, heart, and navel radiate white, red, blue, and yellow lights, which dissolve into my four places, purifying the four obscurations. I receive the four empowerments, and the seeds of the four kayas are planted. Now, from very young age, the guru I have to do everything along. The light and dissolves into me. The guru's three secrets and my three doors merge inseparably. The 
divert you from having perfectly practiced the glorious Guru together with the virtue of having offered praise and supplication, I dedicate to all beings dwelling in the three realms of samsara. May they attain the state of the Guru who is the whole of samsara and nirvana. that all beings realize Maha Mudra, the supreme accomplishment. 
Yes, and the longer you think, you'll soon sit back. Do that, Jinnian, Akbar, and Yambar, Jinnian, 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 Last 
Thank you, everybody. 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 Thank you, everybody.